Do you feel like you're walking on eggshells around your partner's family? Oh, wow. Oh, you're not alone. 50% of couples report that they have conflicts with their in-laws. But if you would like to change that statistic for your family and transform those really awkward moments into something really more bonded and enjoyable, stay tuned. We've got the tips you need. To the Batmobile. So welcome to Coffee with Chris and Meg. Meg, what are we drinking today? So today we have a coffee alternative for all of you coffee dislikers out there or you just don't love the jitters. This is actually healthy and it is a cacao maca clarity in there. There's cacao powder. Cacao. <laughs> Kind of tastes like hot chocolate, but there's like some mushrooms in there for your brain and all those kinds of things. I'll link it below, it's good stuff. Cacao! <laughs> One. So back to navigating the in-laws, the family. I think what's crucial to understand is that when you get married, you become a family. This is a family. Instantly become a family. Mm -hmm. and. The first thing that's important is to understand this now takes precedence over your extended family. And this is hard for some parents to understand. It's hard for some couples to understand at first. Especially if you were maybe the first one in your family to get married, this is extra challenging. So the Bible says for this reason, a man leaves his father and mother mm -hmm. and the two become one flesh. Right. So now this family takes precedence. So when you're looking at your in-laws or your extended family, remember this is first. This is important. Yes, that is very important. Very important. But that doesn't give you permission to be a jerk about it. So how do we navigate these relationships knowing this? Two, don't triangulate your problems. What does that mean? Because that sounds a little bit confusing, right. maybe. What that means is if Megan and I are having a conflict yep. or we're in a disagreement about something, yep. I don't run to my parents and say, can you believe mm -hmm. Megan is thinking this way? Or I don't vent to my parents right. or uh, my brother or my family and tell them how disagreeable Megan is because what happens is Megan and I get this right we figure it out right. but then my family we triangulated it now they didn't resolve the conflict right. with Megan and now there's having some, some anger angst bitterness yeah right? they can build that yeah. up in their hearts some animosity and so it's super important not to triangulate so you're building your spouse up mm -hmm. in front of your parents yes. And then you have other people you can talk to in or vent way. to in a healthy way <laughs> right. that can help you with your marriage. Three, set up some boundaries. Yes, and I think what's really important here is establishing boundaries with you and your spouse of how you want to interact with this family, right? Mm -hmm. You decide here first before you communicate it here. You might not even ever have to, and I would actually encourage you, don't tell your in-laws, we have a boundary with you. This is, <laughs> right? We're only going to see you on Thanksgiving from noon to four, and then we're gonna go over here because that is our boundary, and then we're gonna be home at night, we're not gonna justify it to you. <laughs> That's not gonna go well. <laughs> Establish with your spouse before the crucial moment, right? So like not on the spot, but try as much as you can the week before. How do we want to feel? Let's just talk holidays on Thanksgiving day. What do we want that experience to be like for us? I know what's important for you today. I know it's important for Chris to be with his family watching the Lions game. Come on, boys, let's go. Um, my family's not into football as much, so we say, you know, let's go see your family later after that game and we can be fully present there. So we're not communicating that verbatim <laughs> to the in-laws or the family. We're just saying, hey, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do that, right? Because we have a boundary that we've already established with us. Four. Look out for your spouse. Yes, good. I think this is crucial because I have a family, Meg has a mm -hmm. family, but what I'm doing is I'm looking out for Megan when it comes to my family, and she's looking out for me yeah. when it comes to her family. And so if my family has an issue with us, I don't blame Megan or put that on her. I take responsibility mm -hmm. and I say, hey, this is what we're doing as a couple. I talk to my parents right. about 
what's happening in, in the boundaries of set or what we're doing in the future. Megan talks to her family right. about certain things of what we're doing in the future. If something needs to be communicated, mm -hmm. if something happens, if there's an incident and you need some honest communication, mm -hmm. well, you trust your spouse to really handle her side and you handle your side or you do it together mm -hmm. so that you guys represent a united front when talking to in-laws. Sidebar, we also have a lot of street cred here because not only have we been married for 23 years, we also both work with our in-laws. And we love you guys so much. You are, we love you with all our hearts. Love our in-laws. But it, to say it's not been without its challenges sometimes would not be true <laughs> on both accounts, right? For them working with us as well. So doing this in a healthy way, we know how to do it, friend. Five. Show respect and understanding. So much. Listen, we all can become know-it-alls. Oh Us goodness. kids, yes. when we're in our 20s, 30s, even into our 40s, we get to this point sometimes where we think we know way better than our parents. What do our parents even know? You know how to parent better. You know how to run your house better. Sure. You've got a better way for doing A, B, and mm -hmm. C. And so you can come across as a know-it-all. And it comes Sorry, across guys disrespectful don't forget that your parents do have wisdom that they have been around the block mm -hmm. that they can impart some wisdom still into you right. and you don't always have to be right or tell them what to do or be disrespectful to your folks and in the flip side mm -hmm. maybe your parents haven't shown you due respect right. they don't treat you like an adult or someone who's capable of leading a family mm -hmm. and, and doing things well right. that's when you have to stick up for yourself in a respectful way mm -hmm. and you got to set some clear communication and say no this is how our family does things. yes we are very aware that not every family dynamic is really healthy either. Right. There could be some, some major pain points with your parents or your in-laws in your past. So all we're saying here is as far as it depends on you, as far as it depends on you, you're not responsible for their actions, you're responsible for your own, your responses. Try to communicate in a healthy way. Try to elicit some understanding, some empathy. Put yourself in their shoes. You've married their baby, <laughs> right? right? Um, and be respectful in your communication. You can do that while maintaining boundaries, while not being a doormat, while really showing love and empathy and a little bit of understanding, even if their relationship is not 100% healthy. Six, create a healthy family dynamic. Mm. There's something that you can find common ground with your in-laws. Yes. Like I know with my father-in-law, he's not into football, but he's into motorcycles. Mm -hmm. He's into guns. And yeah. I can talk those kinds of things with him yeah. and have that kind of bond with him. I know that Megan, my side of the family, mm -hmm. is a little bit different than the way you grew up. But sure. you love to go on walks with my mom. I do. Or yep. go shopping with your mom. Shopping, mm -hmm. that's right. We go to Frankenmuth as a family every year mm -hmm. and just kind of Frankenmuth is this little um, Christmas town. Adorable little German town in the middle of Michigan. Yeah, if Put you're not familiar, yeah. it's kind of a cool little experience. Mm -hmm. So try to yeah. enjoy tradition mm -hmm. and build some good family camaraderie yeah. in healthy ways so that you can kind of get rid of the weaknesses yeah. or the growth areas and yeah. focus on the strengths of the family dynamic. I love that. Seven. Have good mental health practices. Yeah. This is crucial because family can create stressful environments. Mm -hmm. Your blood pressure can rise. You know, you can get more anxious or, yeah. you know, depressed or sad sure. when you know you have to go over there. So breathe, have some good practices. And if you want more on that, mm -hmm. we have an entire playlist on how to improve your mental health that we think every person should watch in life when dealing with your families and all of it, that's coming up next.